Hello and welcome viewers to a fantastic video about these here light bulbs. So I, I needed some light bulbs to, to do something with and this is what I ended up with. So hopefully we can make something interesting out of this. So this is going to be a comparison of primarily 200 watt equivalent light bulbs. Now this here unit is actually a 200 watt light bulb and it is General Electric says general purpose and it generates um let's see it generates 3780 lumens so basically like having a sun in your house uh 200 watts of power so that's watts per lumen of about 0.05 so not that great color temperature is pretty standard cost me two dollars and 97 cents for this beauty today and it will cost me this year if I use it three hours per day, if it makes it the duration of the year, about $24.07. Now, let's just admire this packaging here for a second. On this side, they tell me what's going on. And also the fact that, interestingly, it was actually manufactured for Savant Technologies, not General Electric. Made in Hungary. So better than China, that's for sure. And then the other side here, GE tells us that their light bulb here, this fine creation, they say, let us show you what light can do. From light that lets you see every detail to light that helps you connect with family and friends. From vibrant to gentle, our new home lighting solutions make it easy to find the right light for your home. And this one they describe as being strong and vibrant. So hopefully they are in fact correct in that statement. Although it also says that it is soft and pleasing. So between strong and vibrant and soft and pleasing, I'm not sure how we could go wrong there. Here is the actual unit. It is slightly larger than a traditional A19 bulb. It is an A21. You can see single filament. Three different supports there, with this interesting little shield at the bottom, presumably to help keep some heat away, because this thing will generate quite the amount here. Let me get a standard bulb for comparison. Alright, so this is a standard 100 watt light bulb, A19 shape, and there's your, your big guy, big boy. So, that's, that's size comparison there. Now, what we're going to be doing for our first test here, is we have... This little guy, I paid 50 cents for it now. And so what it is, plug to light bulb. I don't think they make these anymore, but it's really very good. And so I'm just gonna, you know, screw in there. And then just light. All right, so this here is a standard A19 100 watt bulb, developing approximately 1600 lumens, maybe 1700. And this is just for comparison against what we're going to be dealing with. So, that's 100 watts right there. And really, that's a kind of a bright light bulb, if I'm honest. And it lights up a fair portion of the room. Alright, next we have the 200 watt specimen. Oh man, that thing is crazy! Mom, check out this light bulb. Ah! That is a significant one. So that lights up fairly well the entire room. Um, yeah, that's a that's a powerful one. Light qual light color is I would I would describe it as strong and vibrant. Maybe not soft and pleasing, but definitely vibrant. That's for sure. It's it's almost like painful to look at because it's so so bright so yeah that's power right there well an interesting change of plans here viewers so i uh i'm thinking like well let's do a real life scenario and so i set up this nice little shrine here of some glassy objects that would look good under some high powered light bulbs but uh i, I turned the lamp on and it felt kind of weird and so then i turned it on again and uh uh there was some arcing and, you know, like the buzzing and fire. And uh, here's this innocent little 100 watt light bulb. And uh, it was tarnished severely, uh, completely black and knocked a hole through 
the bottom. That's really too bad. I kind of liked this little guy. Um, okay. Back down here in the basement with lots of fumes from the carnage of that poor light bulb uh, filling the air. We return with my real life demonstration here with several objects laid out for examination under the different lights. So this is the 100 watt bulb. It is quite pleasant. I have returned now with the 200 watt specimen in this lamp. Technically exceeding the rated voltage, I mean not voltage, wattage. However, the last volt was, the last bulb was not exceeding that voltage and it still caught on fire. So hopefully we cannot catch this one on fire. And I'm going to be brief just to hopefully minimize that chance. Okay, well there it is. I mean, that is very powerful. I don't know how well it comes across on camera. See, look, it's actually darker on the camera, but extremely bright. Ouch. Next up here we have this fella. Great value LED high lumen medium base. Now, this is the LED competitor for that unit we just looked at. It says it's soft white, 2700K, so that's really pretty good still compared to that incandescent we just looked at. This one's only 3000 lumens, although it only consumes 27 watts. So my argument here is that they say it's 200 watt equivalent, but in what world can you subtract 766, 780 lumens and still call that an equivalent unit? Because that's the same as like a 75 or 60 watt light bulb there. So the incandescent is the same brightness as this one, only this one you'd have to add a 60 watt light bulb to it to get that brightness. So I think that's a little bit bogus there, but yeah, it's all right. Same color temperature. These guys don't have quite the nice slogans. In fact, I don't see a single one slogan on here. This one would only cost us $3.25 a year and lasts for 9,964 and a half hours in comparison to the previous 766.5 hours, so perhaps more economic. There's a whole lot of warnings, though. I mean, if you have a light bulb that needs that many warnings, I have to wonder. Some of them are, it complies with radiation and death and radio rules. Um, has a one-year limited warranty. Um, do not expose directly to water, so don't be using your light bulbs in the tub is suitable for damp locations. Can't use it in an enclosed fixture, but they all say that. It says it could cause electrical shock or burn, and you have to install it in an operating environment between negative four Fahrenheit and 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So, also minimum starting temperature of negative 20. Okay, let's continue. Oh wait, hold on now. We gotta take it out of the box. So, this is a large unit here. Although not nearly as large as some of the others we're going to look at today. Now this guy seems to just be like a continuation of their standard line of bulbs. Uh, it's just larger. So here is that same bulb from earlier. And you can see that it is a significant size difference. And so this is not going to work in all your lamps and stuff. Or light fixtures for that matter. So that's an, a disadvantage there. Okay, next up we have... A very heavy LED, which I don't know is gonna, if it's gonna stay in the wall. Holy cow, that's a bright one too. My gosh. So that one uh, doesn't look as bright on camera, but that's because it has that plastic diffuser on it. Uh, it, it, you know what? It almost might be a little more soft and pleasing because the light is so well diffused there. Uh, though again, it's kind of painful to look at and it lights up the whole room. That's pretty impressive. Light color is almost the same. I mean, between the two, they look the same color wise. Let me go feel it. Well, it's not even warm yet, so that's a that's a good one there. Okay, we return now with the LED. And uh, 
same story. Very, very bright. You can see it actually kind of sticks out of the top of the lamp. And you can also see how the kind of directional nature of these LEDs, and that is that the top is much brighter than the other because that's the way in which it points. So not the best in lamps, the LED. So perhaps a disadvantage there. Okay, now this fella here, uh, E-Mart, uh, Ideas Illuminated is their slogan. Technically a photography bulb. It's a 45 watt CFL with a jarring 5500 Kelvin color temperature. So that's like the eye blinder. Um, I don't think this is 200 watts equivalent. I think it's more like 150, but I don't have the box and it doesn't say the lumens anywhere on it. But I tell you, it's a pretty hefty CFL right there. And 45 watts, again, that's a pretty, that's a, like more than double your standard household CFL. Okay, now I'm going to do the smaller of the two CFLs, although we are going to have to wait for it, some time for it to warm up here. So you can see immediately, not nearly as bad on the camera, but it, uh, the color is, is quite uncomfortable unless you like fake daylight. Which I don't. I like either real daylight or like cave light. But uh, it's going to take some time to brighten, so I will have to cut back to you in a second here. Okay, I think that's pretty well brightened up now. Again, it might not be quite as bright, but it's pretty darn close. And uh, it's tremendously... The, the color temperature is definitely different, and I don't love that, but perhaps you do. And th this is a viable contender if... You don't have a space requirement. Okay, now we have the 45 watt CFL. Uh, you can see how it sticks above the lampshade considerably. Uh, so that's not great if you want to use it in a lamp, but I mean, it works, sorta. Finally, this is the largest lamp here. F photographic lamp, 85 watt uh, CFL. This is, my mom bought this. It was quite expensive. I think that one down there on the ground was like 15 or 10 or 15 bucks, and this one was uh, like 20. So, here's what they tell you lifetime, 8,000 hours. They don't tell you the lumens, but they do tell you extra bright, compliant with some strange rules, and you can't throw it away, so that's nice. Features include uh, energy savings up to 80%. Color rendering index of 90, which is good. Low operating temperature saves on your utility bill. Tri-band technology for high grade output. A long life of up to five hour, five years at four hours a day. No noise or flickering. Can't use it where it'll get wet. You gotta grasp it by the plastic and not for emergencies. Now, in case you didn't know what to use your light bulbs for, they, they show you some pictures here, including the top left, a marvelous concoction, if I do say myself. That's ten, nine 85 watt CFL. That would just be significant. I mean, I want to see that unit there. Uh, let's take a look at this majestic beauty here. And this is the only one of the bulbs that comes in styrofoam. So bad for your sea creatures, but good for your light bulbs. Again here it tells us it is a photographic lamp, in case you had any doubts at this point. And it, here it is. I mean, serious, I can hardly even fit it in the frame here. I gotta, like, zoom out. Holy cow, that's a big one. Now, we see here, comparison size-wise to our standard bulb. Here's our, here's our CFL and here's our normal bulb and there's a feline unit down there, but... I mean, I, this is just huge. I mean, it doesn't even fit in my hand. So, I mean, on one hand, you get the wow factor. You're like, dude, check out my light bulb. It's huge. And so, I mean, I actually do that, and I get good responses. So that's that's a pro. But on the other hand, I mean, you can't put this thing in any fixture. I mean, zero. Unless it's, like, in a garage. So... I mean, that's up to you. And then again, I'll, I'll show you the little the comparison here on size with this one that I, I kind of forgot. Here's the size comparison on these guys. And again, you can see this is pretty big. Okay, next up we have the Specimen CFL here. Giant. 
All right, that's plugged in. Let's wait for him to warm up yet. I mean, you can... That's hardly making any light right now. And so it really will take a while to, to heat up all the way. Okay, here, so after having this warmed up for about five minutes, it is up to full brightness. And again, it's tremendous up there with the top. So a good option, except it's the weird color and absolutely huge. Okay, finally, to conclude our experiments here, we can see the sun. I mean, this thing is clear out of the shade. Uh, not practical for use in lamps. So, to conclude our tests, I think we need to recognize that there are probably two worlds here. And that is one for incandescence, and there's one for LEDs. And then you also, I mean, you gotta throw in this guy because look at it. But, uh, I mean, and you, seriously, it's the size of my face. So, first of all, this one did excellent, although frankly, it's too bright for standard installations. It's just, it didn't work in the lamp or out of the wall. You'd need this in like a garage or like maybe a lighthouse or something. Something powerful. But the benefits, other than being cheap and ignoring the drawbacks of the high heat and high power consumption and that, you know, might just catch your lamp on fire. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um... It's not sensitive. You can put this in an attic and it wouldn't care. Whereas this, uh, 113 degrees is the maximum. And really, I don't think I would want to expose it to that. And that's not actually that hot if you think about it. I bet you anything there's attics out there that get up to above that temperature. And this is the kind of thing that would work well in an attic. So really, uh, really a, a fire hazard, but uh, practical for h high light requiring applications and ones that get really hot or really cold like Alaskan wilderness this one would do well and this one I found matched the color temperature well was only two dollars more expensive and will save on energy in the long run but also the diffuser this plastic diffuser actually was quite helpful in making the light more pleasant to absorb and it makes almost the same amount and I think the only real disadvantages here are that it's very sensitive and that to temperature and moisture, uh, lots of points of failure in that little rectifier and voltage step down board. And also it's directional. So if I pointed it this way, it would point at the ground and hardly any light would get to the ceiling. Whereas with this one, the light's going to do basically a 360 degrees and just to tell you how, oh, that's a cool little defect there, how, how much, little these care about what they're in. I, I, I've got a friend who works on lighthouses, and one day I was in uh, the Point Wilson Lighthouse in Port Townsend, Washington, and we turned on the lights, and there was this horrible buzzing and bubbling sound. Well, the incandescent lights, had the roof was leaking, and it filled up the fixture with water. And this was actually functioning, not this specific one, but some other bulbs were functioning submerged underwater. So really hardy and don't especially care about their conditions unless the, the, the envelope itself is ruptured. And we also have to note these guys because while hugely, just grossly impractical in their size, didn't perform terribly. The color is unpleasant, but you could probably get ones that aren't unpleasant. And the reality is that they suited their jobs fine. Um, although, to be honest with you, it's kind of a compromise between both worlds. And you still have that sensitivity. For example, this would not work underwater, whereas those incandescents will. But they still are susceptible to uh, some of the drawbacks that the LED eliminates, such as they're not nearly as efficient as the LED and they're actually more expensive in this case because they're a little more unusual and I think really these are going to be relegated to the light bulb enthusiasts or maybe the photographers still because they do better on cameras. So with that I bid you farewell.